cold desert, a fragile ecosystem. The Himalayas are not merely a geographical feature, a range of mountains. The epitomize a people's civilizational identity that goes back to the dawn of history. If these majestic mountains were not there, the rain clouds sweeping up from the Indian Ocean would have passed over the Indian subcontinent into Central Asia, leaving it a burning desert. A desert is any of the several biomes occurring on all continents at the dry end of climatic gradients of decreasing water availability. When these arid areas occur in high altitude, mainly poleward and away from the equator, landmass is very high in altitudinal aspects. These are termed as cold desert. The cold deserts lie in the rain shadow of the main Himalayan range, which represents 2% of total land surface. This fragile ecosystem includes Ladakh, the southern extension of the Tibetan Plateau, along with Lahore and Spiti in Himachal Pradesh, and a little part of Uttarakhand, covering an area of about 98,000 square kilometers. This stark and barren desert is the home of a unique world of plants survive here in the oddly weather conditions. The closer look unfolds a spectacular world of the most astonishing vegetation with flowers in a myriad of colors and shapes. The area of cold desert represents very scanty and highly specialized vegetation exhibiting a number of ecological, morphological and physiological adaptations. These adaptations like cushion forming, miniature, deep penetrating root system and woolly texture of the plants. Such adaptations help these plants to survive in harsh climatic conditions. The flora of cold desert represent about 1400 species of flowering plants belonging to 490 genera under 98 families. About 20 species are endemic, confining their distribution in cold desert and adjoining regions. Nearly 15 species fall under threatened category from this area. In addition, more than 50 species are used for their medicinal value in different system of medicines. The area is characterized by extremes of climatic conditions like sub-zero temperature with great diurnal fluctuations, scanty and erratic rainfall, heavy snowfall, howling winds, ultraviolet radiation and desiccating exposure to the sun. The journey to Ladakh and Lahaul Spiti is through a long and tough road that zigzags up and down to the high passes one after the other. The cold deserts are devoid of any natural forests due to extreme scarcity of water and poor sandy soil, temperature fluctuations and peculiar climatic conditions. Yet, the region has an astonishing number of plant species that are highly adapted and specialized. The region remains extremely cold for the longer period of the year and as such the plants get a very short time to complete their life cycle. This has turned most of the plants into ephemerals. Plants that are in fruit at lower altitude can be found in flower at higher altitude. Further, most of the wild flora excluding the annual weeds are perennial and the flowers can be found even if leaves are missing. Species of Salix alba, Populus nigra, Juliperus macropoda, Juliperus communis, Hippopi ramanoides are found growing along the streams. The bushes of Caragana pygmia, Ephedra gerardiana usually stand close to habitations. These are of special significance to the local population as a source of fodder fuel and timber. 
The high passes of Ladakh in cold desert region have a special significance for plant lovers. We find access to many plants growing at a very high altitude through these passes. The river Indus harbors one of the oldest civilizations of the world, which is the lifeline of Ladakh. It would be impossible to see the charismatic plants like Thylacospermum, Cispitosum, Acantholemon, Lycopoidioides, Sassuria bracteata, Corydalis crassifolia, Waldemia tomentosa, if we do not have access to these high passes. Baralachala is the first high pass on the way to Ladakh from Lahol. This 4,892 meters high pass has plants like Saxifraga, Flagellaris subspecies, Stenophylla, Crimanthodium elisei, Corydalis triciflora, Rhodiola tibetica, Delphinium nordagini, Erytrichium nanum, Draba oriates, Gentiana algida, Geranium pratens. The species of Sassuria nana, Dracocephalum heterophyllum, and Lamium emplexicol are scattered in the twin passes of Nakila and Lachulangla. The characteristic clumps of spiny Caragana pygmia, Artemisia capillaris, and Astragalus rhizanthus put green to the otherwise pastel canvas of Digbring. The plains of Debring are covered with huge patches of these hardy plants for miles together, which is the favorite habitat of the Tibetan wild ass, Kyan. Thanglangla is the highest pass before Leh and is the gateway to the Indus Valley where Thalicospernum cispitosum, Acantholemon lycopoidioides, Gentiana algida, Urtica hyperpodia, Arenaria festocoides, and Crassulas are the prominent plants. Kardungla boasts to be the highest motorable road in the world, which leads to the Karakoram ranges. Along the Kardungla, the passes like Changla and Warila also represent Primula microphylla. Sisa microphyllum, Econitum heterophyllum, Ephidera gerardiana, Urtica hyperbodia, and many other highly specialized plants. The vegetation of the cold desert are mainly alpine mesophytes. Oasitic and desert. Alpine mesophytes receive a little more rainfall as compared to central Ladakh and beyond. The species like Delphinium nordegini, Leontopodium alpinum, Teraxicum officinale are widespread in this region. Mesophytic elements include some typical Kashmir elements like Photophyllum hexandrum, Astragalus rhizanthus, Verbascum thapsus. The slopes are covered with plants like Bistota affine, Pedicularis bicornota, Geranium pratens. Such green patches are found all along the Suru Valley and Baralachala area. The oasitic elements comprise a variety of exotic as well as indigenous species growing near habitations along moist places. A few common elements like Lancia tibetica, Pedicularis longiflora, Ranunculus pulchulus, Geranium collinum, and Epilobium roseum. The trees. With the exception of the tree like shrub, Hippopi remonoides, are all introduced, including the most common species like Salix denticulata, Populus nigra. Small groves of Juniperus recurva are also frequently seen. 
The plants of cold deserts exhibit a number of ecological, morphological and physiological adaptations which help them to counter the impact of harsh climate prevailing in these regions. Specialized habits like cushion or mat forming in plants like Thylacospermum cispitosum, Acantholemon lycopoidioides, Aranaria festocoides, Waldemia tomentosa, Sexifraga flagellaris, subspecies Stenophylla, and Caragana pygmia. Among the diminutive and bushy habits, the species of Sasuria nana. Thermophysis inflata, Dracocephalum heterophyllum, and Ephedra girardiana form dense bushy habits. Plants like Astragalus webianus, Arnebia euchroma have deep penetrating tap roots that retain underground moisture, so crucial for the survival of such gregarious plants. To counter the excessive radiation from the ultraviolet rays, plants like Sisuria nephilods, Lamium rhomboidium, Astragalus monroi have developed a coat of thick, silvery, hairy wool. These plants are capable of establishing themselves in cold, arid regions as far as there is dry soil or substratum available to provide them anchorage and also remain free from the ice or snow just for few weeks in a year. From the sprouting of plants to the dispersal of seeds, these plants complete their life cycle in a very short span of time. Thus, reproduction and dispersal among the plants maintains the population of the scanty vegetation under the existing adverse conditions. Green leaves in the presence of sunlight produce carbohydrates through photosynthesis. At the same time, the flower uses its energy for heating purposes, which accelerates the growth of pollen and seeds. The saucer-shaped flowers of Ranunculus punctulus saxifraga have highly reflective inner surface of petals. This shape acts as a small dish antenna focusing the reflected light where stamens and carpels retain the heat gained through such radiation. This energy helps in pollination through which it conserves energy providing food to the bees in the form of nectar. This way, symbiotic relationship is formed between insect and plant. Zanskar Valley With snow-caped Darang Durang Glacier is one of the remote underdeveloped valley of Ladakh representing the rich diversity of flora. The vast plains of Changthang in southern Ladakh represent some of the most splendid landscapes of the cold deserts. The azure blue lakes like the Pangongso, Somiriri and Sokar lakes give color to the otherwise barren landscape. The Somoriri, having the privilege of being one of the highest Ramsar sites in the world, attracts a host of aquatic birds, despite its water being brackish. The migratory birds are more attracted by the safe haven that the area offers and also a number of marshes and bogs created by small springs and brooks that flow through the parched and rough lands. Such water bodies are the sources of these enormous lakes which harbour a number of aquatic plant species like Utricularia, an insectivorous plant, Hippurus vulgaris and species of Carex, Cobricia, Polygonum and Marsilia. The Changthang region is home to the hardy Changpa nomads who roam around in the wilderness, camping here and there in the yak wool tents. The Lahol and Spiti valleys represent partially alpine to typical dry elements of vegetation, 
which are the characteristics of this landscape. Fed by the Chandra and Bhaga rivers that ultimately reach Jammu and Kashmir as Chenab, Lahore Valley has a blend of some trees and a variety of vegetation. The blue pine, birch, juniper, salix and poplar are the main tree species including the rare parasite, arcithobium, one of the smallest angiosperms on juniper. The plants of Spiti Valley have more resemblance with the floristic elements of Ladakh as the conditions are more dry than Lahore. The Pin River, one of the prominent tributaries of Spiti, leads on to the fabled Pin Valley National Park, known for its peculiar flora and fauna. The plants of cold desert have medicinal and economical potential as they are being used in Ayurveda, Yunani and Amchi systems of medicine. These species are Hippopi remonoides, Physoclena prielta, Arnebia euchroma, Podophyllum hexandrum, Inula rhizocephala, Ephedra girardiana and Econitum heterophyllum. Several plants in cold desert like Corydalis crescifolia, Astragalus monoroi, Lancia tibetica are endemic to these areas. Among the threatened species, Thermopsis inflata, Sasuria bracteata, Podophyllum hexandrum, Conitum heterophyllum, Arnebia euchroma. The ever increasing human activities are posing threat to this fragile ecosystem. The high passes known for the variety of flora are drying up fast because of the traffic and the resulting activities around them. The fragile lakes are flocked by hordes of people, especially Pangongso, where unorganized construction activities are inviting hundreds of tourists every day. The camps of the nomads and the nearby areas are presented to the tourists as curiosities. In absence of alternate sources of fire fuel, clumps of Karagana and Artemisia are collected along with the long tap roots for use as fuel. Strict rules and regulations should be enforced around the Somariri and Sokar lakes for visitors and developers. Widening of existing roads and construction of new roads is always at the cost of damage to this fragile ecosystem. The mounting human pressure and overexploitation of natural resources have made the Trans Himalayan cold desert one of the world's most fragile and threatened ecosystems. A planned and integrated approach amongst the scientists and common man shall help in saving these wonderful landscapes.